What's up guys, Eric Prey, Focus Fishing Guide Service, Table Rock Fishing Intel. Got another video fishing report for you for Table Rock. It is Tuesday, October 11th. Uh, been on the water pretty much every day this past week. Um, don't know if I'll get this actually put up on the website and upload it today. It might be tomorrow afternoon. But gonna go ahead and knock this out since we spent about six, seven hours up the James today. As uh, far as our lake level is concerned, we are at 910.18, so still about seven foot down, not a lot of movement one way or the other. Supposedly gonna get some rain tonight and tomorrow. We'll see if that actually comes through because we could certainly use it. Water temperature, we are seeing the water temperature drop up here in the James all day. We've seen 72, between 72.1 and 72.8. Got a little cooler as we went up the lake. A little warmer down here. It's kind of been around that 72 to 74 foot range, no matter where I am on the lake. So that's kind of where your water temperature is. The bite's changing. The bite's a little bit different. We didn't have a banner day today, but like I said, we fished about six or seven hours. We had, I think, six keepers and uh, several short fish. Get into how we caught them uh, here in a little bit. But you know, the best way to know what's going on, the best way to get that information every day, join Table Rock Fishing Intel, become a pro member get the daily reports, get the videos. We got a couple of videos we shot this morning that'll be on the website here shortly. Get all the information from all the guides that are out there every day, trying to help you catch more fish on Table Rock Lake. So check out tablerockfishingintel.com and become a pro member and get all that information whenever you want to at your fingertips. But if you're coming down, I'm gonna fish the lower end of the lake. Spent most of the last week at the lower end of the lake. Uh, it is definitely tougher on the lower end. Um, a lot of drop shotting. Uh, shad shape cut tail UV drop shot worm. Fish are really the best place I've been, or most consistent place I've been catching them is out on gravel. Uh, gravel points, 28 to 32 foot deep. And if you can find some brush or some other type of cover out on those gravel points, that really seems to be what's holding the fish. So drop shots definitely working. Peewee and regular football jig from Jewel are both working. Uh, most of those fish are a little bit shallower, 20 to about 30 foot deep. Not a lot shallower, but a little bit shallower. Gravel mixed with rocks. If you know where some rock piles are, it seems like you can pick up some smallmouth out of the rock piles on a football jig if you want to do that. Topwater bite has been incredibly hit and miss. Um, doesn't seem to matter what type of day you have. It's just being in the right place, right time when the fish are either coming up busting shad or they've got shad pinned to the back of a pocket. So the top water, have it on, have it laying on your deck, but don't rely on it. Go up in the mid lake area. The mid lake area is a little bit better. Um, you got a couple of different bites that are working a little better in the mid lake than they are down the lower end. Of course, you can still catch them drop shotting, gravel mixed with rock or gravel points, rock piles, brush piles out there anywhere from 22 to 32 foot deep. Very consistent bite, not a lot of size, but you can catch a lot. You can catch a limit out there doing that, about a 10 pound limit if you want to do that. You can catch a few in the trees, uh, deeper treetops, mostly on bluff ends or in the guts of the creeks. They haven't really set up great on that yet, but they're getting there. Uh, a lot of those fish are 25 to 35 foot deep, and we're just dropping a shad shape cut tail, UV drop shot worm or trompers drop shot worm to them. The jig bite is much better in the mid lake, um, whether it's with a peewee, a heavy cover football jig, or a pro spider jig. A lot of fish coming on those gravel and rock mix points, a lot of smallmouth, a lot of spots, the occasional largemouth doing that. Most of those fish, just like on the lower end, are in that 15 to about 25 foot range. And if you've got brush or rock piles, those will definitely hold more fish and you can get a lot more bites. And again, top water bite, it's, it's very hit or miss. You know, I had one good day down there earlier this week where we, I guess it was late last week, where we had seven or eight good fish on top water uh, on a plopper and a couple on a vixen. But, you know, that was one day. We went out the next day and we had one blow up on it. So it's hit or miss whether you're going to catch them on the top water, but you need to have that out laying on your deck in case they come up. And go up to James where we are today. We threw a buzz bait and a plopper first thing in the morning, had three blow ups on it, never connected with anything. Uh, caught a couple on a shaky head early and then the wind picked up and started blowing about 10 to 15 miles an hour. I picked up a jackhammer and uh, we proceeded to catch six keepers today and I don't know how many short fish, probably eight or 10 short fish all on the jackhammer and on a shaky head fishing wherever the wind was blowing. If the wind was crashing in on a point or back into a small pocket, we could get bit. If there was no wind, it didn't matter what the bank was, we couldn't get bit. So if you're gonna fish, 
Table Rock, the water is incredibly clear. If you can find some wind, you can get on the bank and you can catch some fish shallow right now. No wind, throwing a jig around docks has been very successful of late. Um, hitting the shady corners, hitting the shady walkway, any brush around the docks, throw a jewel pro spider jig into those areas, you can get bit. And then the top water, like I said, we threw a top water this morning, had a couple of blow ups. It's a hit and miss deal. We could come out tomorrow and just absolutely kill them on a top water. So you got to have it on. We did see some fish busting here and there, but we were far enough back in pockets or far enough away from them that we really didn't chase them with the top water today. Go up in the white. White's been really diverse, but it's probably been one of the better areas of the lake to fish, if not the best area of the lake to fish right now. Uh, a lot of fish coming on drop shot, shad shaped cut tail, UV and chompers drop shot worms out on the gravel just like anywhere else if you've got some brush or some rock it'll hold a lot more fish the tree bite is much better up that way mostly on bluff ends and out in the uh, deeper creeks uh, those fish are 25 to 35 foot deep so you can certainly catch them drop shotting there uh, the jig bite is definitely better up there there's a lot more fish on gravel and rock mix points small mouth and spots mostly but you can catch them anywhere from 15 foot to 25 foot deep with a peewee a heavy cover football jig or the um, jewel pro spider jig all those are working find those fish out there or you can throw a shaky head i mean you can catch them on a shaky head with a worm or shaky head with a craw on it as well in those same locations the fish seem to be a little bit more aggressive up that way not exactly sure why and then actually the top water bites much better up there. A lot of fish coming on a whopper plopper, a lot more consistent. Catch them on a whopper plopper, catch them on a vixen or a spook or a sammy, something like that. And on a buzz bait, and most of those fish have been, you know, you just see them. You'll see them busting. The shad seem to be a little bit more grouped up up the white than they are anywhere else on the lake. And that'll concentrate those fish and they'll come up and feed a lot more regularly on the surface. So first thing in the morning, definitely if you're going up the white, have a top water tied on been a lot more shad getting busted and a lot more fish surfacing up that way guys we are almost halfway through october um you know it's it's starting to cool off water's definitely cool off but man we could use some rain hopefully these rain clouds that are starting to circle around me are going to actually produce something but uh we could definitely use some rain get some fresh water in the lake but it is typical fall i mean we got lucky with the wind today and it helped us really narrow down where those fish were at Anywhere we had wind crashing in, we'd get bit. You know, if it was a slick, calm day, like it's been most of the days, or just a light wind, it's a lot tougher, you know, and you gotta just move. That's kind of the key to catching fish on Table Rock in, in the fall, until we get it cooled off, you gotta move a lot. You gotta use moving baits. You gotta fish efficiently and bounce from one spot to another. And it's just, it's a lot tougher. Table Rock's a tough lake in the fall, but we are starting to catch some fish. Things are cooling off and the fish are starting to get grouped up a little bit. Best way to know what they're doing, join Table Rock Fishing Intel, become a pro member, get all that information on a daily basis. Know what the guys are catching them on, know where they're catching them, watch the videos with the, the detail on it to help you find and catch more fish on Table Rock Lake. If you're coming down though, want to hire a guide, give me a call. It's Focus Fishing Guide Service. You can reach me at 417-860-4743. Shoot me an email or book online. Either way, I get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching the video, guys. Check out Table Rock Fishing Intel if you haven't done so. But again, thanks for watching. Can't wait to hear from you. We'll see you on the water.